Hi, I'm Judy. Welcome to Go With Yin Yoga and your yin yoga practice to find contentment. So let's dive right in. Make sure you have all the props that you need. Come into an easy seated position. You can always be laying down, but you're going to need to watch me a little bit in the beginning of this flow. So you may want to be seated. And if you are seated, I do suggest sitting up on a block or a bolster as I am, or maybe some blankets. We're going to begin with a mudra, a hand gesture. And this is Vayu Mudra. Today's practice is aligned with the metal element in traditional Chinese medicine. And that corresponds to air in Ayurveda, air and wind, vata season, fall season. And so Vayu Mudra can help benefit your breathing, benefit your lungs, and as well, <laughs> Open your heart. All good things during the fall season. It's very simple to do. Take your index finger and then just curl it in towards the thumb mount. And this is going to be on both hands. Then you'll just take your thumb right over your index finger and the rest of your fingers come straight out and then will come down and rest onto your knees. So same thing on the other hand, bend that index finger into the thumb mount, take the thumb over it, let the rest of your fingers extend and then bring both onto your knees, palms down. And you can close your eyes at this point. And begin to notice your breath. Relax your forehead, your jaw, your shoulders. On the inhale, think about drawing energy in. And on the exhale, think about letting go. Letting go is associated with metal or the fall element. But the intention I am offering you for this practice is Santosha, one of the Niyamas. And it is often translated as contentment but the literal translation of Santosha, San means total, and Tosha means either contentment or acceptance. Now you can choose whichever seems right to you. I'm going to offer acceptance because Santosha, total acceptance or total contentment, it is all about being content, content where you are, right now, with what you have right now, whether it's good, whether it's bad. So total acceptance. When we try to control things, when we try to change things, that's when we struggle because we can't control everything. We often can't change things. So in order to have that contentment, we have to accept our circumstances. Physically, this practice is going to get into your wrists, your arms, a little bit of your shoulders and your hips. So go ahead and let that mudra go. Remain seated. Open your eyes if you close them. We're going to take a few gentle movements to begin with. As we move into the more yin seasons of fall and winter. I like to have a little movement in my practice, just a little bit, because even though we're going inside and we're resting, too much rest is not good either. So go ahead. And take your arms out to your side, palms face up towards the heavens. Inhale, exhale, let the arms fall down a little bit. Inhale, come up. Exhale down, inhale up. Think about gathering in energy. Bringing energy into your lungs, into your abs, our organs of respiration. Let 
Although you can go at your own speed, I do suggest you make this a gentle movement. Just breathing in and out through your nose. No need to control it. Just let your breath be what it needs to be. And then let your hands fall down. Inhale, bring your hands up overhead, reaching for the heavens. And then exhale, go ahead and bring them down towards your lap, palms face down. Inhale, palms up. Reaching above your head towards the heavens. Exhale, palms come down, bringing that energy into your body. Inhale, gathering up heavenly energy. And exhale, just bringing that all down into your lungs, into your abs, into your chest. And a few more times like this. Also getting rid of some of that tension in your shoulders and your arms. couple more times. Exhale, let that go. Let your hands rest on your knees for just a moment. And inhale, bring the palms of your hands together in prayer position or Anjali Mudra. Exhale, press the palms out as if you're pressing into two walls. Inhale, back into Anjali Mudra. Exhale, press out. Inhale, gather in energy. Exhale, let go of grief, of sadness. Those are the emotions that are associated with our lung organ. Organ. <laughs> the lung organ is associated with the metal element, associated with the fall season. Inhale, energy. Exhale, let go of old energy. Inhale, inspiration. Exhale, let go of anything you need to let go. Autumn is the season that invites us to let go, just like the trees let go of their leaves. And one last time, let go. Inhale, hands come to touch, Anjali Mudra. Just take a moment here. Notice how you feel. As we move through this practice, I'm going to ask you to ask yourself, what does this pose ask me To accept. So maybe right now you're thinking, oh, we've been sitting here so long. I don't like this. I want to move, or at least I want to get into a yin pose. <laughs> what does this pose ask you to accept? Or affirm, my true nature is acceptance. And let that go. <laughs> go ahead and come off of something if you're sitting up on something. We're going to move into a series of wrist stretches. Actually, so go ahead and sit back on your heels if that's comfortable for you. You can also lean forward if that feels very uncomfortable. You can take a block between your legs. That may also make it more accessible to you. Lean forward, point your fingers towards each other, and then just gently lean back, getting a nice wrist stretch here. Our lung meridian runs through the lungs, into the armpit, down the inside of your arms, and down to the outside of your thumb.
And now go ahead and turn your fingers so they're pointing out to either side of your mat. Same thing. Maybe sitting up a little taller. Neck is in line with your spine. Feeling a gentle stretch in your wrist. Point your fingers forward and then take the tops of your hands onto your mouth. This is a pretty intense wrist stretch. Anything that's intense usually asks us or tells us this is something we need more of. But this is a point where you can ask yourself, what does this pose ask me to accept? Does it ask me to accept that my wrists are really tight and I don't pay attention to them? Or maybe this feels good to you. Go ahead and breathe. Feel that energy coming up and down your arms. of any blockages you may have along that lung meridian and finally sit back up take your hands behind you fingers point towards the end of your mat and lean back palms of the hand are on the mat stretching the wrist and the forearm in one final direction I actually really I, I love the fall season and I also love many of the poses that are so wonderful for letting go, which are lung meridian and large intestine meridian. They just, they counteract areas that most of us have a lot of tension built up in. So I really love that. And then gently come back up and just circle your wrists one direction. And then the other. Getting the blood to flow back through them. And if you were sitting up before, which I do highly suggest to make your hips happy, go ahead and grab whatever prop you were using to sit up on. And also grab a couple of blocks if you have them. Coming into a variation of butterfly pose. Take the soles of your feet together, and then the blocks go underneath your thighs. It gives your thighs something to relax into, so you can relax into the muscles, because we are not trying to strengthen our muscles, we're trying to strengthen our connective tissue. Inhale. Grab onto your opposite shoulder, and take the other hand to your opposite shoulder. Elbows are stacked on top of each other. If this feels too difficult for you, you can try grabbing onto your knees, which will require coming down a little bit. Or you can just let that go, but we're looking for an upper body stretch, upper back stretch that is. So go ahead and begin to round over. Begin to visualize White light. White is the color associated with your lung organ. And just visualize that white light entering your lungs. Inhale, exhale, it moves to your armpits. Inhale, exhale, it moves down the insides of your arms. Inhale, exhale, comes all the way down to your thumb. Visualize that white light running easily and fluidly, flowing through any blockages you may have in this meridian. Bringing ease back into your breathing. 
change the hold of your hand. So now you're taking the other hand on top. Letting go of grief. Letting go of sadness. Letting go of anything that doesn't serve you. Perhaps at this moment you're also asking yourself, what does this pose ask me to accept? Maybe it's an emotion you just haven't dealt with yet. Maybe it's a feeling that my life is too hard. Maybe that hardness is asking you to grow and break through to the other side. Last couple of breaths here. Let your arms come down to your mat. Press into your palms and walk your hands back towards your torso. Move your blocks, but keep them nearby. Come on off of your prop. Although you can also try melting heart, as we call it, also known as puppy pose and hatha yoga. You can try it sitting back on a block. Take your blocks somewhat close to your bolster and put your forearms out on them. You may want to push them forward a little bit. Hips stay over your knees. In fact, you may want to push those blocks even a little bit more forward and really reach your hands out. This is melting heart. So if you find this very difficult to do without the bolster, give this a try. You're still going to get a wonderful stretch across your upper back through your shoulders, through your arms. Again, visualizing that white light entering the lungs, going through the armpits, down the inside of your arms, down to your thumbs. And let your neck relax. And maybe your head drops towards the mat. And what does this pose ask you to accept? Does it ask you to accept your ego? Is your ego telling you, I don't need that bolster. I feel perfectly fine without it. But maybe your body is telling you, yeah, maybe I need that. Because remember, we're not getting into muscles. We want to strengthen our connective tissue.
last couple of breaths here. And begin to press into your fingertips to raise your torso. Walking your hands back towards your body. Be taking your bolster out from under you and coming down into a wide knees child pose. You can also leave the bolster right there. And bringing your forehead to your mat. And your arms come along your body with your hands raised towards the sky. Just a short little counter pose to relieve any tension that may have built up in puppy pose or melting heart. And then bring your palms to the mat, press into your hands, and slowly raise your torso up. Grab the bolster. Very, very useful too. I'm going to briefly sit on it. <laughs> We're not going to remain seated on it. Grab your blocks once again. If you don't have a bolster, you can use, excuse me, a block between horizontally across your shoulder blades or under your heart, depending on how you think of it, and then one to support your head. And go ahead and bring the soles of your feet together. And the blocks once again come under your thighs to allow them to relax. And then slowly drape yourself back on the bolster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My true, oops, I went a little too far back. Okay. There we go. You don't want your head coming down. You don't want your head unsupported. Arms come out to the sides. My true nature is acceptance. What does this pose ask me to accept? Again, is your ego talking to you and say, I don't need those blocks under my thighs? And maybe you don't, and it may be perfectly fine. But is that your ego talking, or is that what your body's telling you? Once again, visualize that healing white light. Inhaling it into your lungs. And then into your armpits. Let it run down the inside of your arms all the way down to your thumbs. Strengthening your lungs. Building your immunity. White light flowing truly through your lung meridian.
One option is to stay in this pose for Shavasana, if this feels comfortable for you. If you've propped yourself up enough so that this feels comfortable, just stay right where you are. If you'd like to move into Shavasana, I'm going to suggest a slight variation. Come on down off of your bolster. Bring it down. <laughs> and bring it... Actually, no. Don't bring it under your knees. Put it towards the top of your mat. Vertically or horizontally across of the mat. Take your blocks. There's my other block. Put them underneath your knees instead of a bolster. See how your blocks can work like a bolster? Lay down, push this back, and then take your arms out, readjust the blocks wherever you need to have them to feel comfortable. Stretch your arms out so that the backs of your hands are on the mat, maybe coming out a little bit or maybe just straight out, whatever feels right to you. Once again, opening through our chest, allowing your lungs to really breathe freely. I'm going to come up to hold space and I will let you know when it's time to transition out of Shavasana. Bring your attention back to your intention. It could be simply physical, in which case this is a great heart opener, this practice, and hip opener, really gets into that upper back, all those areas that tend to have a lot of tension in our body. On a more subtle level, it asks you how you can be content or accept what's going on in a pose, whether or not your ego is speaking to you. And you can take that off your mat and ask yourself, how can I accept what's going on in my life right now, whether that's easy, whether that's hard, and find ease with it. Santosha, contentment or acceptance. My true nature is acceptance. And when that statement is true, we do lead a more easeful life. Go ahead and let yourself just melt into your mat. Perhaps you are not accepting the need to relax in Shavasana and you just want to get on with the rest of your day. 
and I have a vlog, a short vlog about centering. It talks about why we center when we begin our practices. And the same is basically true at the end. If we just rush and skip Shavasana, it's hard to take that sense of calm that we've created with this practice out into the rest of our day. And that's really what we want. We want to take that feeling of calm, of santosha, acceptance, contentment, out into the rest of our day. That's why we practice. Begin to be aware of your body. Notice the touch of your clothes on your skin, perhaps a breeze on your face. Notice the sounds inside of you and widening to hear the sounds around you, perhaps in your room and then perhaps in the rest of your home. And begin to take any small movements you need. Wiggling fingers and toes. Maybe some windshield wiping of your hips, letting the knees fall from one side to the other. Moving the neck gently, side to side, up and down. Allowing your breath to deepen. Back your, bringing yourself back into the present moment. And with your eyes still closed, if they are, bring your knees into your chest and then gently fall over to one side. Take a few breaths here. Continue to relax in Shavasana for as long as you like. And if not, if you need to get on with the rest of your day, begin to walk your hands up, bringing your torso upright, coming back into an easy seated position. Inhale, bring the palms of your hands together in front of your heart. Give yourself gratitude for taking the time for self-care for yourself today so that you can care for everybody around you. Slightly bowing your head over your hands, blinking your eyes open, taking in your mat and the rest of the floor and then raising your head and allowing your hands to fall gently down into your knees or into your lap. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope that you found some Santosha in this practice. If you did, please go ahead and click the like button. That helps me to reach more people with free yoga. If you'd like to practice with me again, go ahead and click subscribe and the bell button. May you be healthy. May you be happy. May you be free from pain and suffering. May you be accepting.